Hey queens, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back. But all the elements living free in my mind. Moody. Okay, so as you can see, we are in my living room recording this video. I hope I'm not gonna regret it. I tried to record in my bedroom, but the sun is out today and it's just directly where i normally sit so it was just going to be impossible for me to record the video that side but anyway if you're new over here welcome to my channel my name is lydia don't forget to like comment and subscribe follow me on instagram it's lydia underscore msm pinterest and tiktok are at style by lydia m now if you're wondering what i'm wearing today i'm wearing this fabulous fabulous top which i've had since 2018 it's just honestly speaking to the fact that I was once an extreme shopaholic. I purchased this in 2018 and this is the first time I'm wearing it, so you do the math. But anyway, sis, let's get into today's video. So now you can see from the title of the video, we are talking about the five different habits that I've adopted into the new year to make sure that I elevate to my best and highest potential in 2024 so let's get right into it yeah so fun fact <laughs> this idea came to me when i was sleeping and i actually woke up to write it down so i just want to show you here and i was just like you know what say less say less we are recording this video okay so as you can see we have a lot to go through <laughs> but i'm gonna try to make this as short as possible the number one habit that I've adopted in 2024 to ensure that I actually achieve my goal is having an exercise schedule. So when I say exercise schedule, I don't mean, you know, five sets of squats or whatever. An exercise schedule as in a timetable that I can see because I committed to working out five days a week, which is ideally Monday to Friday and then resting on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, but this week I was honestly so overwhelmed with work that I actually rested on Friday, exercised yesterday, today is a Sunday, and this is my second rest day. So normally I have my workout challenges on Instagram. If you've been following me, you would know I would do the booty challenge, the ab challenge, the core challenge. And some people will actually DM me and say, you know what, I took part in your challenge. It was actually so effective. It's had a positive impact on my body and just my self-esteem altogether. So I think, you know what, in 2024, we're actually gonna get back to that. But the actual habit that I adopted this year is I have a timetable, which I printed out at work. I found the template on Google, printed it out, and I actually decided to laminate it and put it just outside my second bedroom door. I just needed something physical that I can see that's gonna hold me accountable to this goal that I have. Obviously, I have apps that I can use on my phone and all of that, but I think last year I really fell off my fitness train because of the stomach infection I had. And I know that I always talk about the stomach infection, but I actually have never shown you pictures. And I was like, do I really wanna put the pictures out? But I just want you to actually get an idea of where I was. So I've always been, you know, a trim, toned person naturally. That's how my family members are built. My cousins are like that. You know, my sister, my mom. Um, and when I had my stomach infection last year, it honestly knocked my confidence down. I was so insecure didn't love my body whatsoever i normally have about three or four styled by lydia m photo shoots in a year but last year i literally only had one because i was in a very bad place as far as my mental health is concerned with regards to my body so i couldn't really commit to the goals that i had set um and i really fell off <sighs> so when i had the stomach infection it really knocked my confidence, like I said. I could not even commit to exercising because I would commit to my challenges and I'd do the exercises, but it was just not effective because obviously it's not what was on the outside that was a problem, but it was internally, you know? So until I actually went to the doctor and consulted and I was put on medication to a point where I saw the results, from the medication that's where i was like okay the confidence is slowly but surely coming back child um and now i'm fully back to where i used to be in 2022 you know so in 2024 i committed to exercising keeping it simple keeping it realistic because before i think i would be 
very i think i'd just be too ambitious sometimes it would also be vague you know i just say 30 minutes to an hour that's not specific so what i decided to do this year is i actually put down i want to exercise five days a week monday to friday and i also committed to working out for 30 minutes once i feel like i've built up the stamina that's needed for longer exercises i'll actually you know pump it up to 45 minutes and probably eventually an hour but i'm also getting myself mentally prepared for actually going back to the gym because that's one other thing that i was missing the last time i was in the gym was in 2022 and I just want to get back to being the fitness granny that I was. So that's the number one habit, just having an actual physical plan that I can see. Whenever I'm walking to the kitchen, walking from the bedroom, I see it and it's actually quite a motivation for me. So another thing that I'm adopting this year, I'm not doing the whole, you know, checklist and whatever, because I feel like the way my brain works is that if I see a check and a cross mark, it almost makes it feel like a task and a chore that I need to complete and it doesn't really give me the excitement to want to do it. It's just like, oh, I want to get this over and done with. So what I decided to do differently with this plan is instead of making check marks, I actually put a smiley face whenever I've completed my exercise, you know, and just seeing the smiley faces on the chart accumulating as the days go, go by has actually had such a positive impact on just my overall energy and attitude towards exercising so i look forward to doing it because honestly when i look at those smiley faces it's almost as if it's an incentive for committing to the goal that i've set so that's the number one thing and the ultimate goal is to end up in the gym all right so moving on to the second habit something that i decided to do differently is that instead of setting new year's resolutions which for me equates to the same as a checklist i find it to be very daunting it just takes the excitement out of you know looking forward to doing certain things because it just feels like okay it's a new year's resolution i need to check it off my list so what i decided to do this year is to actually come up with a 2024 new habits list again i needed a physical stimulus something that i can actually see a tangible thing instead of writing things in my journal or writing notes in my my phone i just needed something physical that i can see i actually decided to place this list in my closet <laughs> i literally typed it out like i said printed it out i laminated the sheet and i decided to put it up in my closet I just hate seeing things around so the fact that I already have the workout plan outside the second bedroom door because the door is always open. So with this list of habits for 2024, I wanted it to be somewhere where I can see it constantly but it doesn't have to be in my face. So for me, it just made sense to put this list in my closet. I get ready every morning, okay, I'm, I'm bound to open my closet to look for something. So I decided to put it in my bedroom in my closet and honestly just opening the closet every day to get dressed to look for an item and i see my little list on the side and i quickly go through it it's just a constant reminder of these habits that i'm actually committing myself to in the new year so honestly i just want to say seeing the list in my closet every day as i'm getting ready you know opening my closet to look for an item it's honestly the smartest idea i could have came up with you know i see it there it's not overbearing it's not annoying it's just clean straight to the point 23 points noted down in order it's just very clean and it's pleasing to the eye so just to give you an example of some of the points that I put down on my habits list is my sleeping time I force myself to go to bed at 10 o'clock I started practicing this in 2023 I've always been a person who just sleeps late I would sleep late because I'm on my phone I go to bed very late because I need to call my parents you know because of the time difference between China and South Africa obviously I would sometimes need to wait up till midnight because that's 6 p.m. in South Africa you know so I've just always been a person who functions at my optimum late in the evening as a result I would actually go to bed at like 2 a.m and i'm going to bed at 2 a.m but i need to wake up at six o'clock for work so I, I would just be running on four hours of sleep three hours of sleep and when i thought about it i'm like this makes absolutely no sense so the beautiful thing about adopting new habits is that there's always a domino effect as a result of forcing myself to go to bed at 10 p.m 
I wake up early. When I wake up early, that means I can do my devotionals in the morning, I can do my Bible study in the morning, and I can squeeze in that 30 minute exercise. That works in my favor because one other thing that I used to do, you know, all these years, I would try to exercise after work. And you can imagine you had a long day's work, you were just stressed out, maybe you have deadlines, you know, you have things to check off your list, and now you still have to come back home prepare your dinner and still commit to a 30 minutes to an hour workout so i feel in retrospect when i thought about it i was like for a long time i would set goals which are beautiful on paper but they were not practical I, it's almost as if i was not evaluating my schedule i was not evaluating you know my other responsibilities and seeing whether this is going to fall into place that's why i'm saying sometimes when you're for when you're setting new year's resolutions just that term on its own is so daunting you find yourself coming up with this list of items, but it's not an actual plan of how you're gonna realistically actually setting out and intending and planning with intentionality to ensure that you actually complete those tasks or check those things off your list, you know? So I feel like with this new habits list, which I have been practicing since last year, but this year I was like, you know what, baby? We are actually specific. Exercising after work is very exhausting. It's irritating. Sometimes I would see that I committed to five days workout and I only worked out twice a week. I only have one cheat day in a week. You know, I do not allow myself to just order whatever it is that I want to order. I'm committing to more meal preps, you know, cooking, home cooked meals, just living a healthier lifestyle. I've cut out alcohol out of my diet. I've cut out fizzy drinks and stuff like that because I was like, there's no way I can set a fitness goal for myself, but I'm still continuing with these other unhealthy habits like ordering out and just doing the absolute most, you know? So I have more energy these days because I go to bed early, I wake up early. By the time I go to work, I just feel so refreshed and it's an amazing feeling. So yeah, those are just some of the items that are on my list. Meal prepping, um, ordering out only one once a week, having one cheat day, exercising five days a week, um, going to bed at 10 o'clock, waking up at 5.30, doing my devotionals, my, you know, Bible study and all of that. And I feel like now I have more of a healthier and realistic routine because it matches and fits my lifestyle and my responsibilities. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now we're moving on to the third habit or change that I've adopted into the new year. Again, this is something that I practiced since last year. If you follow me on Instagram, you would know that I went missing. <laughs> Some people are like, you're missing. I'm not missing. I just decided to go on a on a short social media cleanse, but it was specifically Instagram because I mean I was active on YouTube, Pinterest, TikTok, it was just specifically Instagram. Um, so the third point is an auditory and visual cleanse. So now let, let's break it down, let's get into it. Let's get into this auditory and visual cleanse that I'm talking about. So basically what I listen to and what I choose to watch. All the content that I choose to consume, whether it's music, um, books, just conversations, podcasts. I've been very intentional with the things that I listen to and the content that I consume, what I sit down to actually watch. So that's part of the reason why I decided to go on my four month hiatus. Honestly, initially it was supposed to just be a month on my birthday because I was just like, you know what, it's my birthday month. I was doing the YouTube countdown. I was fresh from being home, you know, high on positivity. But I was just like, I, I don't want to be on social media for my birthday month. I actually want to live and be present in the moment. I don't want to be on social media, you know, and be influenced by other things. I have my own plans for what I want to do for my birthday. So I actually wanted to strictly focus on myself, my energy, the plans that I had for my birthday. Just be present and enjoy the moment. So going back to this third change, a habit that I adopted from last year is like i said being intentional with the content that i consume what i listen to and what i watch i think sometimes we don't really take into account how impactful the content that we consume is on our lives you know there's a point where unintentionally just because of something that was suggested i decided to watch it i mean we know how the algorithm works you click on one form of content um you're gonna have the same kind of content especially with youtube so before i knew it i found myself in this position of watching male or men bashing content and i was just like 
what is this whole thing about because i'm telling you you don't realize just how much of an influence the things that you watch and listen to have on you until you see that you've slightly kind of sort of adopted the mindset or even the talking points that the people are using like i said i found myself watching a lot of men and male bashing content i'm not a man hater i love men there are a lot of beautiful men in my family i have male figures in my life who are very influential on me um people who actually have kind of shaped my mindset in terms of what i would be looking for in a husband so now i got to a point where you know i would have conversations around you know men and and it's just like ma'am where did that come from the content i was consuming you will never find a cussing word in the music that i use in all my content because that's just it doesn't feel natural to me because that's not the type of person that I am. You know, like the city girls and the, who's this girl with the red hair, Kali Red, not Kali Red. What's her name? Red something. What's her name? Sexy Red. Sexy Red. <laughs> Their music is just too extreme and vulgar. It's too crass for me, personally. No ma'am, that's not for me. You'll never find me using that type of, you know, sound effects or music as background music in any of my content. But like I said, if you're on TikTok, now you're watching someone's video, they are doing a transition to the song. Now you find yourself singing the song over and over again. And it's just like, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. I remember there's a time where I was watching a sermon by Sarah Jakes Roberts and she was talking about how there's so many different portals in our lives and she was saying I have a rule in my house nobody watches was it was it Sarah I think it was a Sarah Jakes Roberts but the, the point about horror movies and like violent movies it was Megan Ashley where she was saying anyone who's a guest in her house knows that you're not about to watch a horror movie in my in my house because you're not about to open that portal and have all those spirits lurking in my house and it's like if you don't believe in that that's okay but I believe in stuff like that you know so like I said you are listening to this podcast you're consuming this content talking about men and ish now i find myself having conversations where i'm constantly bashing men and it's like where did it come from because that's not the kind of household and family background that you come from you have a father who's present in your life an amazing man who's always been supportive he is an active present father I'm in a house with both parents who've been together for over 35 years. So it's like, so where is this men ain't ish content coming? Like, where is that just mindset coming from? Obviously from the content that I was consuming. And that's why I'm saying I went on this auditory and visual cleanse. I'm very selective with what I watch now. I had to go on so many channels and not necessarily unsubscribe. I'm so glad that YouTube has this do not recommend option. I'm not gonna take my support away from you because at some point I watched your content because it was very entertaining for that season of my life. But now I'm just gonna, you know, press the do not recommend because I don't need to be seeing this. I, I, I don't want it. <laughs> so whether we like it or not, you are opening yourself up to the influences that come with whatever it is that you're watching or listening to, you know? So I had to be very intentional about that. I started in 2023 where I was just cleansing my feed of a lot of things. I was, you know, pressing, do not show me this post again, do not recommend content. I'm setting the foundation for the type of woman that I wanna be for years to come. I'm turning 32 this year and I'm very excited about it. <laughs> I'm very excited about it. My birthday is in September. So I'm just like, you know what? Laying the foundation, just doing the groundwork now because I, I just want to be the best version of myself for myself so that when I look in the mirror, I say, I I would marry you today. I, I would definitely marry you today. I've definitely stopped watching male bashing content. It does not align with the person that I am. The fact that I do want a little boo for myself, okay? Isaiah 60 verse 22, when the time is right, he will make it happen and I will meet the man of my dreams. But until then, ma'am, we are gonna cleanse these ears and actually make sure that when the omen is being sent from the heavens, we can receive it and hear it. Like, can you actually hear it? If he's sitting there listening to men in ish? No. <laughs> so, if you know me, you know I love jazz. I listen to jazz, it's very soothing. I listen to a lot of gospel music. I went on YouTube and tried to look for, you know, positive content, especially 
content that's put out by, by women you know um i started watching a lady she's in her 50s i think she's turning 55 this year for me i love her so much she has really helped me in this femininity journey as well as another channel name is feminine yoni i've also started watching a lot of christian based content because it's like i cannot be doing my bible study and then go ahead and watch some nonsense that makes no sense you know so megan ashley definitely um definitely ek another person who i found last year i was like oh sis is very anointed jackie hill perry there's another channel that i found i think it's better together on cbn just influential women who are having impactful conversations that are actually beneficial to me you know that's just the tip that i'm on and it's relaxing over here all right so now we can move on to the fourth point of the video this is the second last point and this has to do with physical appearance obviously i feel like elevating yourself starts with your mental health your emotions just like the internal work exercising having a healthier diet drinking water staying hydrated um you know what you consume all the other points that we've mentioned but i think it also has to do highly with how you present yourself how you perceive yourself and just what you look like because so, honestly whether we like it or not the first time you meet people they don't see your heart <laughs> they don't they don't see your sense of humor they don't see just how smart you are they don't see all of that the first thing that people see literally their first impression is how you present yourself how you're packaged but more than anything it's not necessarily about other people but all about how i want to present myself on a daily basis there's certain changes that i've made if you have been following me you would know i used to love long press on nails last year i only had long press on nails i think like four times no 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 probably like three times i had long press on nails when i went home and i remember i had a black set just after i moved into the apartment but the point that i'm making is something as simple as always having my toes and nails done that has been a priority on my list i'm just like baby the toes have to be scrumptious all the time i've stopped wearing the extremely long nails it took a while for me to adjust to these nails because i've always had long nails <laughs> but i think after a long period of not really having the nails to getting them when i went back home in july for the july holidays you know you go from being able to use your fingers use your hands and you know withdraw the card um from the atm and all of that now to going back to using your knuckles again which the knuckles were okay for the for the longest time because that's what i was used to but now it's like after not doing that for such an extended period of time now when i had to revert back to you know using my knuckles to pull the card out and all of that it was just like i don't like this anymore i don't like this anymore i just love how classy elegant just seamless short nails are they just look very presentable very clean um and it's just it speaks to the season that i'm in and the type of person that i i'm growing into i said it was quite an adjustment for me so i think the easiest thing for me to do was to experiment with the different colors you know oranges your yellows i did you know the warmer tones and whatever and then i fell in love with the white nails and i've just been stuck on white nails ever since my toes are always white um i think i might experiment with color in summer and get like a blush pink or whatever but for the most part my toes are always white and i've embraced that i've accepted that i actually like that it's more cleaner and i love it so anyway along with my toes and nails and being done all the time i improved and upgraded my skincare routine um i invested in serums i went for more facials from last year um i was masking once a week i still do it even now 
I, I just take better care of my skin you know I make sure that my skin is always moisturized I, I stop consuming alcohol just making sure that I'm actually nourishing my skin taking care of my body and all of that if you've been watching me <laughs> and following me on Instagram I think it's quite obvious that I'm not a fan of wigs it's either my hair is in braids or I have my natural hair which is in a bun I feel like the next step in elevating my physical appearance um, besides my nails and making sure my skin looks good as well as my toes for me it was just finding a hairstyle that works for me I don't like wigs I'm not a fan of wigs I honestly feel that wigs age me they just make me look too mature I don't like that I love just how clean elegant and just prim and proper <laughs> I look with my natural hair so I just got to a point where I was like you know what taking care of my actual natural hair nurturing my hairline back to health we're still struggling we're still struggling because there's a point where I used to wear wigs a lot going to work but at that point it's just like throw a wig on and an Ellis band just to keep it intact whatever but I was not taking care of my actual hair I have long beautiful full luscious hair okay and it just got to a point where i was just throwing on wigs because i just couldn't be bothered but little did i know that i was actually damaging my actual hair so like i said in the elevation process i've made peace with the fact that this is more cleaner this is more elegant this suits me more it just brings out my facial features which i love my nose my cheeks my smile <laughs> my dimple <laughs> uh this hairstyle i think just it just shows off all the beautiful features that I have on my face when I'm wearing wigs I just feel that wigs age me I don't like the way I look in wigs they just nod for me and now that I've embraced my signature hairstyle which is actually my natural hair and having it in a bun I just want to invest in restoring my edges and my hairline and making sure that my hair is actually healthy and I'm taking care of it so I would say the last point to add to you know habits that I am adopting in the new year is being intentional about my style I know I'm known for my style styles by Lydia M and all of that but I think I'm trying to get my closet to a point where I just want to have my statement pieces which are like my showstoppers and if I really want to make a statement but I really want to focus on elevating my everyday wear I want to elevate my everyday wear I want to get to a point where I just like find my style that actually works for me I feel like if we just look at the percentage I'm probably I'm at an 80 you know I, I have locked down what my favorite pieces are what what what's my favorite way of presenting myself but I want to adopt that on a daily basis even if I'm going outside to the mall which is right behind me I still want to look presentable you know I, I want to get out of this mindset of oh you know save the bomb ass outfits for special occasions uh, darling life is precious and every day is a special occasion so i'm just at that point now where i'm trying to find a way to elevate my everyday style keep it clean keep it modest keep it very classy but at the same time just make it functional and practical for everyday way i'm a teacher so obviously i cannot be dripping going to work but still I want to be presentable I want to feel comfortable and confident in the way I present myself so basically I want to get out of that mindset of saving the best looks for Friday up till Sunday but Monday to Thursday I look a hot mess I just want to get to a point where I balance that out and I think that's what my main focus is going to be in 2024 just finding my style finding my everyday style that works for me so that I feel presentable 24 7 Monday to Monday okay Monday to Monday <laughs> The last thing that I've adopted and I think I've adopted this from 2022-ish kind of elevated a bit in 2023 but I feel like I want to what, what are they saying now stand on business that's what I want to do so the last point for me is becoming more financially disciplined I am not gonna lie and say the shopaholic in me <laughs> doesn't twitch whenever I see that there's a sale in Charles and Keith doesn't twitch whenever I see that there's a sale in Swarovski or Pandora it's a struggle okay but honestly when I sat down I was like listen sis you're not getting any younger 
yes i've made sound great financial decisions before but i just want to get to a point where there's consistency basically i think with everything that i've talked about today the theme is consistency you know i want to be consistent with how i manage my finances um that that's very important financial discipline is one of the highest you know items on my list for 2024 so now how exactly am i planning on doing this <laughs> so the first thing is actually something that i saw on pinterest and i think it was warren buffett if i'm not mistaken yeah so it was basically that you need to save and invest before you spend save and invest before you spend for the longest time i obviously tried to adopt this mindset but like i said i used to have very a very unhealthy relationship with money i would shop like the world is coming to an end but at the same time back then is before therapy and all of that and i know for a fact that i was using my shopping habits and just going on shopping sprees as a crutch because i was trying to mask my feelings run away from my feelings run away from my emotions and the best way i could do that since i love style and fashion was to actually shop and buy things that i don't actually need like i said i've had this top since 2018 why am i wearing it for the first time for this video i've never worn this item outside <laughs> not even for a stroll to the mall to have dinner or lunch i've never worn this top before and this alone just speaks to the fact that i used to have a very unhealthy relationship with money i was a shopaholic so for me 2024 like i said save and invest before i spend that's a mindset that i've been adopting since 2022 it was kind of shaky back then i tried to be more disciplined last year and i saw a huge change in my finances and i want to do even better this year you know and setting the tone for the years to come so that's the first thing save invest before you spend i ask myself now with anything that i'm about to buy do i want this or do i need this I don't convince myself that I need things because that's what I used to do. I'm like, oh, I mean, I want it, but I kind of need it, you know. I have sneakers, but, you know, this is just a different shade. I want it, but I need it. I need it. If you think about it, I need these sneakers. That's what I would do. And it's like, end of the day, I was using shopping as a crush, like I said, to mask my emotions and run away from my feelings. But what that leads to is the fact that I have clothes in my closet with tags on them that i haven't worn in over a year because i bought it not because i needed it and not even because i wanted it but because i could you know so just having healthier habits so the last point to mention here i think one of the biggest gifts i could have ever given myself was getting a financial planner someone who can sit down with me every six months to actually give me a rundown of my finances and you know how far i've come with my investments and stuff like that so getting a financial planner honestly you get it at the bank i have two financial planners and that has been a game changer for me because i used to think i can do it on my own which you know when when i think about it sometimes i get so mad because if i had the discipline I would be so far with my finances. This is this is what my Virgo brain computed years ago. I would have a savings plan, but not make it long term. Again, it goes back to the having a long term mentality as far as my finances are concerned. I would have a short term savings plan. Do you know what I would do with the money once it pays off? <laughs> Go on a trip, shop go out to fancy restaurants shop some more to take a huge chunk of the money just give it to my mom and say i love you sis and it's just like ma'am ma'am and i would just have these short-term saving plans and whenever the money actually pays out i would just blow it i would literally just blow it i don't even want to think of how much i've blown so far <laughs> i don't want to think about it i think i'll be sick i don't want to think about it but there are other, you know, um, sound decisions that I've made as far as my finances are concerned. But it's just like stuff like that. When you sit down to reflect and think about it, you're like, I could be far if I had the discipline a long time ago. But you know, better late than never. Better late than never. So it's okay. It's okay. 
so queens this concludes my video those are the five points that i wanted to share with you guys the five changes that i've made the five habits that i've adopted if you may to ensure that i elevate myself into the best version of myself that i could possibly be in 2024 obviously setting the tone and the foundation for years to come so i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope you found it informative and useful um and if you did don't forget to leave a comment down below don't forget to also like and subscribe share the video actually i forgot that you can also share please share my video on different platforms follow me on instagram it's lydia underscore msm pinterest and tiktok are at styled by lydia m so yeah queens i hope you will have a fruitful 2024 you've already you know wrote out your new habits list don't call it a new year's resolution list sis okay that's the biggest setup ever your brain almost sees that as the enemy is like i don't want to do it okay just call it something else to make it more fun for you to actually check those things off the list you know and yeah let's just grow and elevate into the best versions of ourselves this year for ourselves more than anything you know just transform everything from the inner appearance to the outer appearance you know just make sure that we actually function and operate in the highest 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 capacity ever anyway queens i'll see you in my next video happy new year and go slay those goals okay <laughs> bye